Hi, this is Olivier and you're watching the Internet of Things show. And we have John here today. Um, and with John, we're going to look a bit closer into what the developer experience is when working with Azure IT Edge. In the first video, we used a temp sensor, which is a built-in module provided for you. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at what it takes to create your own custom module. Yeah. So we provided a template for you using the .NET uh, Core framework. Yeah. So for now, we're using .NET in the preview. Uh, but I assume that we're going to have more languages, right, supported for creating modules. That's right. Okay. Right now, we support C Sharp, uh, working on C, Python, Node. Okay, yeah. and Java. And Java. So .NET new, uh, dash I, Microsoft Azure IoT Edge module. We'll install a template for you. Let's bring that over to the command prompt and install that. And then .NET new Azure IoT Edge module, dash N filter, filter module. We'll create a module using that template. Yeah. Got it. So that basically scaffolds the, a, 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 a .NET Core application uh, for you to then compile and then create that uh, module for IT Edge, right? That's right. Yep. So let's take a look at that. So filter module two was created. Okay. I'm going to CD into that directory, and I'm going to open VS Code. So let's take a look at what you get here. It scaffolds out a uh, program CS for you. Okay. Which includes basically a, a pass through module. It doesn't do anything special. It just takes a message okay. uh, from its input and passes it to the output. So it's every my, module has an input and output. Yeah. So it's my hello world for uh, uh, an edge module using .NET Core, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What kind of toolings do you have in VS Code? I'm seeing like various extensions there. Do you have specific extensions you're using for IT? Hub and IT Edge development. Absolutely, yeah. So we have we have two two main extensions that we use. We have an IoT Edge extension which allows us to build projects. So if we go here and right click on the CS Proj uh, file, mm -hmm. we have a build IoT Edge module okay. option. Okay. That's going to build it and prep it for uh, uh, prep it for Edge uh, deployment. Okay. And then in the Docker folder, uh, it comes pre built with Docker files for you. So okay. if you wanted to do a, a Linux version or a Windows Nano version, you could okay. do that. Um, you could also right click on Docker file and say build IoT Edge module Docker image. Okay. So that is going to create your Docker image okay. and prepare it for it to send to it a, to Docker Hub or an ACR. Got it. And that mm -hmm. functionality is given by this extension to the IoT Edge extension, right? That's right. Okay, That's cool. Right. Yep. I think there's another extension you're using as well, which is the IoT Hub toolkit, right? Which is uh, mm -hmm. the one that allows you to list the devices and work with IoT Hub basically from VS Code. Yeah, that's another handy module to help in your IoT Edge development. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you created your project. Yeah. What's next? Yeah, so I created my project. Now you build it, um, you push it to your ACR, and okay. then you want to apply it to your configuration. Um, okay, like you do usually, uh, apply to your Edge configuration device in IT mm -hmm. Hub, and then it will deploy on your Edge device. Yeah. You add it. it to your route, and then you deploy that route. Okay. Okay, cool. So that seems to be all well and nice in, in your like discovery of IoT, mm -hmm. right? Um, That's right. So I think I think you've been working with actual customers, mm -hmm. and you have this kind of first time experience with them about what's needed to do more to, to go beyond just that elder word creation of a module. Absolutely, yeah. So if you go back to VS Code, you'll see that um, if you if you right click here and build an IoT Edge module, imagine you have a project that has you know, 20 modules, mm -hmm. um, and you want to deploy them as a unit. Yeah. Or if you have even one module and you want to build, debug, test, push uh, mm -hmm. to your ACR and then deploy and all yeah, those yeah. commands, um, it becomes cumbersome um, mm -hmm. to do so all manually. Okay. Um, so I've been working with a bunch of customers, and we started off with, uh, in one engagement, we started off with about 10 developers, mm -hmm. all of us working on different modules. Mm -hmm. uh, we became quickly apparent that we cannot scale uh, using uh, manual tools. Okay. Um, and so I started working on a script. At the time, it was a simple PowerShell script. Mm -hmm. um, but then we released all the runtime and everything with Python, so I converted all that to Python. Okay. Uh, and it was a simple Python script. Um, and then over the holiday break, what I did is I turned that into an official PIP package. Okay. Um, and so now you can um, install what I'm calling the Azure IoT Edge dev tool okay. uh, using just pip install. Okay. Yeah. And well, what that will do is turn all of these 
commands into simple one-liner commands mm -hmm. that you can execute in the CLI. So it's a CLI-based tool versus a visual tool. I like it, I like it. Well, show us what the flow is and, well, maybe you can show the GitHub page of the project first. Yeah, let's do that. And then, and then we can look at the flow of all of that. Yeah, so if you go to aka.ms slash IoT Edge Dev, it'll land on my GitHub page for the Azure IoT Edge Dev tool. Okay. And at the top, it'll show you a list of all the things that you can do. Okay. Um, you can create an Edge project, which has sample configuration for you uh, for the runtime as well as the modules. Mm -hmm. You can build and deploy with this um, modules build deploy. You can do a runtime setup start, which will use your uh, a local generated configuration file for you. Uh, you can do things like view all the Docker logs, and that will pop up and pop up a new console for every uh, Docker container okay. that's on your system. Um, and you can also do things like set up a registry so that it will um, use your own ACR instead of the official Microsoft Docker uh, Hub mm -hmm. uh, container registry uh, for things like the Edge Agent and the Edge Hub. Okay. So a lot of customers need to have everything constrained to their own environment. Mm -hmm. They can't call up to a Docker Hub or they can't call out to another ACR. It has to be all uh, secured in their own environment. Got it, got it. Right. Um, and I also have a two minute video introduction uh, to the tool. Okay. I have an instruction on how to use it uh, with WSL and then a longer introduction there. So you feel free right. to check out those videos. Cool. So let's just take a quick look right now. So back in the command prompt, I'm going to CD into the Edge Projects folder. Um, and I'm going to create a new project. So with the IoT Edge dev tool, um, let's just run the help on that. You see that we can do things like create projects. Um, you can uh, control, um, you can manage Docker. Yeah. You can uh, build, deploy modules, and manage your runtime. Okay. And so I'm just going to go here and say IoT Edge dev um, uh, project create, and I'm going to say Edge project three. That created a new project for mm -hmm. me. Now let's open that in VS Code. So once again, like scaffolding, but this time at a different level, right? Correct. Okay. This is now, think about it as a, at a solution level mm -hmm. versus a project level. Okay. So now what we have is a folder here for the configuration files. So the modules, uh, .json file and okay. the runtime.json file. Okay. So before in the other video, we passed a connection string into the uh, start command yeah, for yeah. the control. Yeah. Here, that is going to be in the runtime JSON file. Down okay. here, there's going to be a device connection string. There's also other settings like container registry settings. There's uh, a path to the agent. There's a bunch of other logging and Docker certificate settings as okay. well that you really, once you get into real world or, uh, edge development, you yeah. have to learn this, okay. right? You can't you can't just be passing in commands into the CTL yeah. all the time. You really have to manage it via config file. Yep. Um, and you'll notice here that we see these uh, environment variable references. Okay. So the first thing you need to do when you set up a project is to configure your uh, environment. Okay. Uh, and one more thing about this: the, the modules here, as we saw before, are in a modules folder. Uh -huh. So instead of modules being the first thing in the project, like we saw before, mm -hmm. now it's a, a sub part of our solution. Okay. Um, so everything is managed here. All, all the environment variables are managed through this .env file. Uh -huh. So first thing I'm going to do is just rename this to .env. I okay. put a .tmp there so it's not picked up by source control. Um, uh -huh. To be extra careful to not expose our secrets. That's cheating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's smart though. Yeah. Like it. Yeah, so the thing we need to do is we need to configure our IoT Hub name, our key, uh, the device connection string, mm -hmm. uh, an edge device ID, the runtime host name, which is the name of this local computer, okay. and our container registry uh, settings, server username and password. Okay. So once you get into a real development, your custom modules are going to be hosted in a container registry. It can mm -hmm. be, it can mm -hmm. be local, it yep. can be yep. you know, uh, an Azure container registry, it can be Docker Hub or any container registry that you need. Um, and if we're running on a Windows machine, we would use runtime, this runtime home directory. Yep. We're running on Linux, we would use this one. Okay. Um, so we're running on Windows. Okay, so back in the command prompt, if we say IoT Edge Dev Modules Build Deploy, what this command is going to do is going to iterate through every module in your solution. Mm -hmm. It's going to .NET Restore, .NET Build, .NET Publish, Docker Tag, and then push to your ACR that you've specified in your .env file. Cool. So things that 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 you would have done manually when you're yeah. in that hello world situation Absolutely. to understand the process, but now you're yeah. in you're rolling right. You're developing actual right. edge devices. It definitely simplifies your life. Got it? Absolutely. Yeah. And the dash dash deploy mm -hmm. will apply the configuration to your edge device. Got. It. And I guess you can use these options independently, right? Right. So if we just wanted to build, we just pass that in. Okay. If we want to build and deploy in one command, we do that. Okay. And if you want just to redeploy, you don't need to run the build. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
So we're logging into the container registry uh -huh. and we're building the modules. Then you can run out of, are you running local here registry or remote? You're... This is a remote Azure container okay. registry. Is it a valid scenario to say that you're going to run a local one where you're developing on your modules, right? To not to sim to shorten the time of deploying Absolutely. the image and so on. Yeah. So if you wanted to run locally, what you would do is come here and change this to localhost local 5000. Okay. Uh, like that. Okay. And everything just works. Okay. Yep. So you don't have to. Because the tool is going to actually get an image for a That's local right. registry. Okay. Yep. Got it. That's right. Yep. Let's undo that. I'm sure the Docker aficionados will appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> so right now it's up, uploading to our ACR. Okay. Yeah, so that's the process you would shorten actually if you were running locally. Absolutely. Well, you would still load it to the registry, but you, you, have, you don't have the network latency. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now it says deployment's complete. Okay. And now we're ready to start our edge runtime. When we started the Edge runtime before, we passed a connection string, and then we said IoT Edge CTL start. Okay. With the IoT Edge dev tool, we say runtime setup start. Okay. That's going to pull in the configuration file that is generated by the project. So here, if we go to config mm -hmm. uh, runtime JSON, yep. you'll see that here we have a uh, container registry, there's an environment variable tag. Yep. But in build config runtime, all of those are expanded. Mm, and so it, it automatically builds that configuration for, file for you based on your environment okay. uh, variables. And we'll use that when we call uh, setup start. Got it. And basically you're wrapping, you're wrapping or scripting the existing command that are coming with the IT Edge runtime initially, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So now the it's set up and now the runtime is started. Okay. So now that the runtime is set up, I'm gonna install an NPM package called IoT Hub Explorer. What this is going to do is going to let you view messages coming from the Edge device to the IoT Hub. Okay. There's a monitor events method on that that we're going to see in a second. You got it. Okay, great. That NPM package is now installed. Now I'm going to call the monitor events method on that package. And now we can see messages flowing in from the Edge device to the IoT Hub. Okay. Yeah. So basically, yes, you had started with the, the IoT Edge dev tool. You started the runtime. It did pick up the configuration, mm -hmm. downloaded the containers that you had deployed before, and then running them locally. That's right. Okay. Um, can you actually, with the tool as well, kind of monitor what's going on in the Docker containers? With the IT Edge dev tool now, uh, can you also do some monitoring what's going on on the Edge device? Yeah, absolutely. So I included a Docker command. So here, if we say IoT Edge dev docker logs, what that's going to do is open up a new uh, command prompt mm -hmm. for every container that's on your Edge runtime. So you can see the logs stream through in, in real time. Got it. And it's going to save all those logs to a local zip folder. Okay. So then you can send to the engineers for them to help you debug your problems. That's right. Nice. Like it. Yep. So you can see the logs here for Edge Hub, the temp sensor. Uh, you can also see for Edge Agent. So okay. you can see where it's pulling. Is it pulling from your ACR? Is it pulling okay. from localhost? Is it doing everything that it's, it should be doing? Okay, yeah. great. Well, that tool seems to be pretty useful for, for developers out there. So I think we, we're going to hear more about this one in future. Um, that was a great intro to that tool, John. Good job on this right. one. Excellent. Thank you. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Yep. Thank you.